All the regular viewers of my channel probably know that I like to dress in like a business casual style usually. And you might be looking at me right now and thinking, uh, what exactly happened? Well, you gotta know, I'm a Jeep bro now. Indeed, this 2020 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon has made quite the impression on me. But uh, before we continue, a little disclaimer. For this review, I was limited to 200 kilometers with the Jeep. And as I live right by downtown Toronto, that means I wasn't able to take this Wrangler off at all. But to be honest, that turned out to be somewhat of a blessing in disguise. We all know this Jeep Wrangler is pretty much as off-road capable as it gets from the factory. I mean, <laughs> look at it. This thing is what rock formations have nightmares about. Besides, the most offered 95% of all Wranglers we'll ever see is when the owner accidentally hops the curb at a local mall's parking lot because it was looking after that hot guy or girl that just came out of the plan of fitness. Most people buy Jeep Wranglers as lifestyle vehicles and not as trail conquerors. But you know what? During those 200 kilometers in Toronto, I learned that you don't really need to take a Jeep off the pavement to feel how special of a vehicle it is. But before we continue with this thought, let's talk about some of the mods downtown Jeep and Chrysler made on this specific Wrangler. Wait, let's talk mods. First of all, this bump I'm sitting on right here. And those lights, Mopar accessory, so not from the factory. Same with the matte black grille, also not from the factory. We got new wheels, different tires. The tires are the same ones you get from the factory, be of good riches, but these are 35 inch tires. We also have a very useful side stab right here. Uh, trust me, if you get 35 inch tires, you do want to have side stabs. And we also have a soft top. Normally it comes with a hard top, you have a soft top available, but this soft top is aftermarket. All right, let's take a look at the interior. First of all, what we instantly notice, really nice, we got grab handles on the left and the right side, so on both entrances. Not really that needed right now when we have the doors installed, but remember, it's a Jeep Wrangler, so we can remove the doors. We could just put down the windshield, we can remove the, uh, the roof and everything. I actually got a video about us driving through Toronto without the doors, so if you want to see that, top right off your screen, there's a little eye. And um, yeah. First thing I noticed when I came into this interior when I entered it the first time is that it's a lot smaller than I thought. I don't know, I thought, I thought it would be bigger, but that's probably because when you look at the Jeep from the outside, it's so wide, but that's mainly the fenders and that's the, uh, that's the tires in this case, right? So it's not in the interior. Um, but once you're in there, you actually notice it's quite nice. I mean, yeah, this is a $65,000 Canadian truck. So um, it's quite a lot of money, but you gotta remember that most of the money is spent on the underbody essentially so all the off-road gear all the differentials all the suspension all that is where the money goes but still the interior is actually pretty nice like everything we touch is either leather or like here soft touch plastics and these are actually really soft touch soft touch plastics so um those are really nice uh we got some cool features like we got a double centered console so we have like if we got the parking permit in my case that i want to display at night um i can just open this up and we have a little area where we don't need to worry about it just being <laughs> completely destroyed. Everything where we store stuff is rubberized, so there's a lot of grip, so it doesn't fly around. And you also need to remember when Jeep engineers design a Jeep interior, they have to keep in mind that all this can get dirty, really dirty and full of water and stuff like that, right? So that's why we have actually really nice looking uh, seats here. We got our beautiful brown, saddle brown leather seats with the Rubicon logo on top of it. They're pretty comfortable. The first thing I noticed though is I cannot put the, uh, I, I like to sit pretty upright in the vehicles. Yeah, and those seats don't go any more upright. So that's as straight as they get. So uh, yeah, that's kind, that was kind of, kind of uncomfortable at first, but I got used to it. And down here we have all of our drivetrain stuff. So of course we have the gear selector with our eight speed automatic. We have our high low selector so we can switch between two high, three wheel drive, four high all wheel drive and four low which is really nice if you go off-roading. Uh, then we have our differential locks. We have our sway bar disconnect. We got our auxiliary buttons. So for example, for the lights in front, we can just press that. We can just hook that up, up to four different lights. So if uh, or anything basically, so we can have lights up top, we can lights front or other stuff. And um, yeah, no, it's, it's a nice interior. Three things to know. The uh, back seat looks freaking tiny. <laughs> like it's kind of hard to get in there, but once you're in there, it's actually, it's actually pretty, pretty okay. It's pretty roomy. 
Um, second thing, the trunk. Act the trunk is tiny. Like it's, just, it's absolutely tiny. Like you, you won't get anything in there, pretty much. But if you need to, you can just fold down the seats. You can actually fold them up completely, uh, so you have way more room. And the infotainment system we got in here is so you connect. Kind of confusing to be using that first time for me, uh, but after a few days I got used to it. It's just very heavy on menus, but the cool thing is the bottom row on but of buttons you can just rearrange them and just put your favorite menus there so that makes it a lot easier to use and i mean if you buy this vehicle you're going to use it for a few years probably so that's no problem at all if it's not intuitive for the first two days um yeah our soft up just unlatch these and we're free we got the world above us and uh, that's really nice especially in hot summer month like right now and of course just put it back in latch it up super easy super quick that's pretty much everything I have to say about the interior. Um, I would say, let's just go for a drive. Okay, setting off in the 2020 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon two-door. Um, first thing you notice right off the bat when you get into this, uh, into this Jeep, if you've never, especially if you've never been in like a truck before, this feels like a truck. This is like, I've the car I had previously was the G70 Sport, the Genesis, and that is quite different. Every, the ride is um, way more bouncy, everything is slower, it doesn't react as quick. I mean, like, look at the wheel. <laughs> There's a bit of wobble left and right, but we don't really turn anywhere. Um, so that's one of the first thing you notice, but it's a Jeep, it's a body on frame vehicle like that is all to be expected so let's talk about the engine we got the two liter turbocharged inline four that is you can also have the pentastar v6 but this inline four is about equal actually like according to according to jeep the pentastar has more horsepower but less torque according to dinos it's pretty much even over the bar like all across the board so the inland four might be the better choice in the end up oh, all right the street is closed because of covid right now <laughs> welcome to 2020 and um no but yeah the the engine is pretty good it has 270 horsepower 295 pound feet of torque definitely plenty um we it's made it to an eight speed automatic which shifts pretty uh, pretty well actually it's non-disruptive it's actually it does a really good job the auto and the engine is pretty good too i'm i'm happy with it there's just a few little things that annoy me um it's kind of loud in here but uh, i don't know if that's really like the engine is very audible that might just be the the speed and convertible but on the other hand it also doesn't sound good at all there's four cylinders that sound all right but this is definitely <laughs> this is definitely not one of those um and especially if we if we do start and stop, like start and stop is really annoying in this car, and I've turned it off multiple times. Like I'll just you'll hear it. We come to stop here. It's off, and it's just really raspy noise. Like it's kind of cuffing to life. It's like, <laughs> and it's it's really not a pleasant noise. I'm not not a noise I want to hear. And that's not. That's definitely not this Jeep being a convertible because that sound comes through the windshield up front. So that's just the the starter not sounding uh sounding anything close to good in this uh jeep but all right i, I get why they have start and stop in this uh it's just it's about fuel economy official and it's a f about saving millions and millions and millions by m improving your miles per gallon by one um and yeah the transmission like i said shifts pretty well just occasionally it happens that it's kind of there's a bit of a transmission lag sometimes so the the throttle response is good but if I were to floor it and go off instantly, like almost instantly, it starts accelerating when I'm already off the paddle. That should not happen in my opinion. Like that's not a good thing because it, when you're, if I want to accelerate and, uh, sorry, just the intersection. When I want to accelerate and then for some reason decide not to accelerate and go off the pedal, it shouldn't still accelerate. It's not too bad. It's not huge. It's still, I don't like that. So the transmission should be a bit more responsive. And when I floored, well, okay, maybe not in the middle of the city, but a uh, oh, tiny bit. You see, it just, it, 
it takes a bit. It's not the fastest shifting transmission, but that's all right. It's uh, this is not a sports car, so uh, just just something to notice uh, when you when you're driving it daily, it doesn't really, it's not really that noticeable, honestly. So uh, not a deal breaker. Just figured I mentioned it because I noticed it. And while we're talking about the engine, we can also talk about the fuel economy. So the the rated fuel economy for this two door Jeep with the inline four is 10.6. I'm getting over 160 kilometers right now. Where is it? <laughs> I'm averaging 14.3 right now. To be fair, all city without anything else moving. All city and every 20 kilometers there's a bit of like I've, I've floored for maybe two or three seconds. So I'm, I'm not driving it super economically, but I'm also not driving like a maniac. Thing is, we have 35 inch tires, so that also contributes to it. Uh, so. The fuel economy will be bad if you if you're driving this if you if you're buying this Jeep even though it's not a big vehicle you will have bad fuel economy that's just something to get, that you can you'll have to get adjusted to but right now gas is cheap so whatever right we don't care <laughs> if it's cheap um, but what people care about and what it's often mentioned with the Jeep is the safety which I don't think is necessary I think safety is necessary but this Jeep gets like the Jeep Renault gets a lot of unfair criticism, especially uh, if you look at like official crash uh, crash test results. Um, you know, often it's like it has its flaws. I'll be honest, but it's also the only vehicle where you can take out all doors and the roof. That's all structural elements in every other car, which they cannot really use here. Structural elements. Basically, the whole side protection is this bar, like this, and down there the floor. The roof uh, and the and the rails. That's the side protection. All right. So um, <laughs> that they managed to actually cram that, like like keep the ability for us to remove everything and still pass crash tests, even though not very well. That is that is good. I feel like and yeah, maybe it could be improved, but we we will not really truly see if if it's a fault with the Wrangler or it's just well one of the attributes of one of those vehicles where you can remove everything we will see that next year when the Bronco uh, will be released the Ford Bronco which is pretty much the only competitor this this car will have so we will see how the safety is back then but I wouldn't I wouldn't be too bothered honestly no like it's a compromise but you, of course of course you're gonna compromise safety if you can remove everything like that's just common sense and another thing, by the way, I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm just going all of over all the negatives that I had right now. Just listen to my uh, to my final thoughts in the end, all right? If you're thinking I'm shitting on this guy, <laughs> on this truck, sorry. Uh, no, kidding, died. Um, I was asked on my Instagram regarding the uh, FCA fuel economy, uh, the FCA quality, right? Because FCA is known to not have the best quality uh, in the business, which is true. FCA is kind of wonky every now and then. And this Jeep Wrangler, this JL generation had a few problems in the last few years. The thing is, those were the first model years. Pretty much every car has problems every now and then. And um, as, as a reviewer, I, I get a br nearly brand new car for uh, 200 kilometers in this case. I cannot tell you much about, about, about reliability. It's just something I wanted to, to mention because often people ask me about it. I can, I can do the same thing you guys can do, Google around. <laughs> And see if there's any re known reliability issues but that's about what i can do it's fca yeah but quality can also change so uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't bother too much about it the only quality issue i really noticed is when i was removing and reattaching the passenger door because on the in the housing for the bolt there was this tiny bit of a manufacturing issue because there's like, like the tiniest piece of metal is sticking out just I thought at first I thought it was paint but it's metal and you know when I was working on this car and removing everything here and there I was I, I was getting used to having all fluids on my <laughs> on my hands like whoop, didn't notice look down it's like oh oil or oh uh, just sweaty or whatever because it's pretty that was pretty intense in the summer sun so uh, <laughs> but then one while working on that passenger door, I look down and whoops, <laughs> six of my fingers are bloody. And whoops, the wrench is bloody. And oh, my hands are bloody. It's like, um, that's not supposed to be like that. So what happened? There's like this tiny piece of metal sticking out of the housing and you don't feel it. Like, <laughs> you don't really feel it. It's in such a bad spot. I cut myself actually three times on it, even though I knew after the first time, 
it, you just can't avoid it. <laughs> so uh, I cut myself three times on it. You never feel it. It's just a really deep cut that bleeds for a few minutes. So that's some of the quality. That that's that's a quality issue that shouldn't exist. That should have been checked. Uh, so I don't know. That's FTA quality. Whatever you decide. Uh, just I mean, w when you take delivery of of one of these, just just take a look at it, honestly, <laughs> and then you'll be fine. If you notice something, you go to the dealer and be like, "Hey guys, look at that. It's not perfectly worked. Can you please fix that?" And whoop, problem solved. All right, enough negatives. I talked to. You, I said so many bad things about this car right now. Don't think I don't like this truck, please. I just had to get like, that's just where I get, <laughs> where I start uh, talking about that. This truck is actually, I love it. Like, I'll be honest, I wasn't looking forward to this truck that much. I, of course, I like reviewing cars, but you know, the, the Genesis G70 Sport was more exciting for me, like in anticipation. I was like, oh yeah, I'm getting Genesis, cool. That'll be fun. Oh, Staples sported up too. <laughs> Uh, 2020 <laughs> um, no so so I was more excited for the G G70 for example I was excited for many people of course uh, many other cars of course uh, the Wrangler is an icon so I was still excited but it's just like you know knowing it's 200 kilometers I won't be able to take it off-road so I was a bit split on it but my god was I wrong like this I, I get why people don't buy this truck and go off to go off-roading off -roading. like like i said about 95 percent of all wranglers probably never get off-roaded and i totally get I, I totally get why i get why people buy it as an as a as a lifestyle vehicle because it's just so damn fun at it you know like the g70 and the hyundai 30 and it's, you know all those sporty cars they're fun they're really fun if you're able to drive them fast and then they may be comfortable but that's about it this jeep is fun when you cruise like i'm not gonna course, no, maybe not winter, but in those like those summer days right now we're having beautiful weather pure sunlight we got like 25 degrees you just pop open the uh, pop open the roof put down the windows or just remove the doors <laughs> uh if you if you're more like that and blast your music you're just feeling good it's just I was so happy when i was when i'm driving this car it's just like yeah you're just having a good time you can't help it but i have a damn good time and you know like while I was driving uh, and cruising I had a dog like a car in front of me that had his had a dog sticking out of the rear window you know like dogs do and for the first time I was like I know how you feel buddy you know you always think like how does a dog feel like he looks so happy hanging out of that window and I finally know it's just it's just joyful to drive this honestly and I'm so happy it exists because like this is this is an enthusiast vehicle. Many people buy that that aren't enthusiasts, which is great. But this is a pure enthusiast vehicle. It's like one of the, pretty much the most off-roadable car ever from the factory. Um, at the same time, you can do st stupid stuff like you can remove the doors, you can remove the roof, you can all that stuff, which is ridiculous. Think about it. It's 2020. Like all the regulations cars have. But they still managed to make it make it able so you can just remove everything. That's awesome. I'm glad it, glad it exists. And it's pretty much there's no contention. Yeah, class above. You get the G class. Not as off road capable, more luxurious. Down up, down below you have the Jimny, which we don't get in North America here, which is not as off off road capable. Costs a lot less though. But for example, none of those two you can remove the doors or anything. It's just it's unique. And there is nothing like it until we will get the Bronco next year, which I am very intrigued to see how that Bronco is. Because on paper, it looks to be good. We will see in the end how it will fare. But um, no, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to the Bronco and seeing how it, how the Jeep will do with it when it, for the first time in many years, actually has competition. That'll be exciting to see. The only other hard pill to swallow is when you look at the specific range is the price it's over sixty four thousand dollars canadian that is a lot i'll be honest the g70 which is a luxury vehicle four-door sedan and it has 370 horses 365 pardon me that's less that's 58 grand so that is that's six grand different and this is not as luxurious this is not as quick but 
it's off roady it's a lifestyle vehicle. Like, like I said, it's off roady It's, it has its own benefits. But this thing has 15 options. I have this. I have the sticker, the window sticker. 15 options. So the the base price for a two door Rubicon is actually 49,000, which is way more reasonable. So if you if you just uh, if you just a bit more careful with which op options you take, and you don't spec everything like in this one, you, you'll be fine. Additionally, we got some mods on it, like I said. So I think this is like a 70 grand truck, roughly. I don't have the the exact price right now, but um, it's a lot of money. I don't know if we'd spend 70 grand on a Jeep. It just kind of depends on uh, what kind of person you are. But um, no, like I said, just take a few options less and you'll be fine. You, you can easily go down five to 10 grand on the price if you're just a bit more careful with what you spec. But yeah, um, final thoughts, just wrap it all up. I know that that was like a big flash of bad and good things that I just thrown at you, sorry for that. Um, but I I really like this. this, this this truck surprised me. This really surprised me in a very positive way. Um, I had so much, I haven't had this much fun cruising in a vehicle probably ever. And I've had some pretty fun vehicles I was able to drive. Um, of course, other vehicles are more fun for like a brief period of time, like on a racetrack or when you got a cool windy road. But this thing is just, fun almost all the time and it's just I get it I get people that buy these trucks and don't ever take them anywhere but the but the city it's it's a magnificent vehicle I really like it and um, yeah I did I did really enjoy my time with this yeah there's not much more to say about this um, I really liked it I'm very glad I had the chance to drive this for uh, for a bit unfortunately I didn't have that much time I wasn't able to take it on a tour um, like I like I always do and I would have loved to just cruise and cruise and cruise and cruise wasn't able to maybe next time around we'll be able to take it off-road we'll see it's just a special vehicle if you even remotely interested go go take it to test drive huge thanks to downtown Chrysler and Jeep for giving me access to this vehicle for a few days journalistic disclaimer like always they have no say about what I'm saying in this vehicle I could have totally trashed this car if I have the truck if I felt like it uh, they don't have any say about this I pay them back and by them being able to use my material like my photos and stuff like that so there's no conflict of interest there just so you know yeah like if you live in the area of Toronto and you're interested Jeep go to Chrysler uh, Toronto Chrysler Jeep these guys really understand Jeeps like this this is such a good spec they know Jeeps um, and yeah there's no harm done in, in doing a test drive right so yeah if you want to see any other of my other re reviews I'll post a few ones uh, at the end of this video or top in the top right. Also, I've got some other videos with this uh, Jeep. We got a special video in which we like POV videos where I'm driving, uh, for example, with outdoors. So we also have that. But um, yeah, as always, if you have any questions, just post them down in the, uh, in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer it, even if it's like six months old or something. I'll do my best. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. And I hope you'll stick around because we got a few more, well, a, few, a lot of more cool cars coming very soon so uh yeah thank you for watching you have a great day